Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up HITL for iNav. Now, HITL is a new feature that's coming with iNav 6.0. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, Release Candidate is already out now, and we're actually on Release Candidate 2. So I'm producing some videos for iNav 6 that people may find useful. And one of those is the HITL, which people have already been asking about. So what is HITL? It stands for Hardware in the Loop. And what it basically means is our flight controller down here is going to actually be processing the data from sensors given by a flight simulator, feeding the data back and actually flying the plane. So why is this useful? Well, from a developer's point of view, this is hugely important because it allows us to test changes without needing to go out and fly anything, which means we can make a change, upload it to the flight controller, test it in the HITL and we can see the results straight away. We don't have to you know, charge our batteries, go out to the field, wait for the weather, anything like that. We can just try it and you know, if it needs changing, change it, try it again. So from that point of view, it's really useful. But for other iNav pilots, this can be a useful tool too. Currently, it only works with a program called X-Plane, which is a flight simulator, a good flight simulator for full scale aircraft. And actually companies like Airbus do use it as a flight simulator with a, like a full cockpit layout, all that sort of stuff. But for our small planes, the physics models don't match exactly, but it allows us to test out new features. So for example, if we wanna make sure our return to home is working, we can test that and that's all good. But what I'm gonna do now is take you through the steps to set this up. Now, the first thing that you will need is a copy of X-Plane 11 or X-Plane 12. Both of these versions now work with the hardware in the loop. I'm not gonna show you how to download it. Basically, you can get it on Steam and that downloads everything for you anyway. If you don't wanna buy it, you can download the demo and that gives you 15 minutes of flight. Once the 15 minutes are over, you just need to close X-Plane, reload it and you can carry on. So if you don't wanna actually buy it, then go for the demo. But with X-Plane 12 out now, you might find X-Plane 11 for a bargain or wait for one of the Steam sales to come along where you can get it even cheaper. Right, so once we've set up X-Plane and got it working, you, you can test that with uh, the standard planes, with you know, whatever. Once that's all working, we can look at the hardware in the loop side. Now, as far as iNav is concerned, if you've got 6.0 on there, it's already in there. All you need to do is have a GPS set up, which again, it doesn't need to be connected. If you look at this flight controller, all I have on here is a receiver, but I have got a GPS set up on the ports page and enabled in the configuration. So that's all you really need to do. You do need a receiver because we're actually gonna be using our transmitters to fly the thing. So we need that link, but everything else, the sensors are provided by X-Plane and iNav just deals with them. So what we need to do is download the actual hardware in the loop plugin and aircraft. So what we need to do is pop to GitHub and I'll put a link in the video description for the repository, but it's Roman Lutz repository. He's the guy who's done this and integrated it into iNav. So thank you very much, Roman. This is awesome. Um, and it is the iNav X-Plane hardware in the loop. If we just look at the standard page, the readme has got a lot of really nice information about how you can set everything up, but with this video, I'm just gonna take you through a quick overview of how to set it up. What we need to do is go to releases and this will be the latest release at this time is 1.3.0. Um, Vulcan support has been added, so it runs much nicer now. Um, and x 12 support has been added. All we need to do is download this aircraft.zip file and I'm just gonna save it on the desktop. Now that file, does come with a plane, which is the NK FPV Surfwing. But I would actually recommend not using that plane because there is a better one. And Mark Huffman spent some time developing this plane and tried to get it flying pretty close to the real world plane. And you'll see in a sec when I click on discussion, which plane it is. So to get to this file, we go in discussions and new X plane models for iNav. And if I scroll down a bit, you can see what it is. I don't know why Mark chose an AR probe. You know, I don't think he rates them that much, to be honest, but there we go. And all we need to do is download this VR wing noob zip file. 
and again just save it on the desktop once these are downloaded we can close this down so i'll just minimize it okay so the first thing that you need to do is find out where your installation of xplane is now this will be in a steam folder and i believe we can actually find it in steam so let me go that route so let's open up the steam library and if i click on this can i open up the folder yeah so we click on the gear manage browse local files and that will open up our xplane 11 folder so let me close that down so i can get rid of that the way i'm going to install it is slightly different to how uh, roman says to install it uh, following roman's instructions we will open up the aircraft zip file and basically copy that into this aircraft folder so we have aircraft extra aircraft extra aircraft and then the nk fpv surf wing so that would be how you would normally install it is just copy that in there but i install it slightly differently so that i don't have to worry about maintaining the plugin so so much so what i actually do is inside this folder we have a plugins folder and what I'm going to do is copy those into the Xplane plugins folder. So we want to go into resources and plugins. And then we'll just copy those two folders into the plugins folder. Now it's going to ask me if I want to replace. I don't because I've already got them, but uh, you won't get this box at all. So let me just skip that. So that is the plugin installed. And now what we're going to do is install the noob wing because it's, it's a nicer plane than the other one. So we're going to go back into our extra aircraft folder and we'll open up our VR wing noob folder. And we're going to copy that into the extra aircraft folder. So I'll do a replace just um, because it's exactly the same. Now, one thing I will do is pop into here because there is a plugins folder and all I'm going to do is delete that plugins folder so that it uses the main plugin from Xplane. So you can see if we did have multiple aircraft, we'd have multiple versions of a plugin. I just find it is a bit nicer just to have a single version of a plugin that we can modify and update easier. So that's why I do that. But that's it basically installed. So what we're going to do now is just go for a little fly. So I need to open up Xplane over here but it will pop up on my desktop now. So you just open Xplane as normal. So you run the simulator from within Steam and once it loads up, I'll show you how to get started. Right, so what we're gonna do is click on new flight. Now you'll see that I can already see this uh, science fiction. We can see this uh, INAV VR noob wing. If you don't see it, just make sure you tick this box up here to show extra aircraft from older versions. If I uncheck that, it will disappear. But if I check it, it will come back. So we'll choose our INAV VR noob wing. And I'm just going to fly from Beijing uh, Dingling Airport. I can click confirm. You can choose your time of day, your weather, anything like that. And then all we're going to do is click start flight. Now, depending on your computer, this may take a bit of time to load. Don't worry about it. It will get there. When I had my old computer, it literally took 15 minutes to load. Um, but um, yeah, don't worry. It's, it is loading. It is just quite an intensive program. Right. So the first thing that will happen is we will be in our plane and we need to connect to the flight controller. So to do that, we're going to go up to plugins and INAV hardware in the loop and click link connect to flight controller. So now you can see we've got our OSD, we are connected to the flight controller and it's behaving a bit weird. Don't worry about that. When it's on the ground, the sensors don't seem to be uh, quite right. When you first install this plugin, you'll notice uh, you'll have like a grainy line going on, which will look something like that. This is an analog OSD or an analog video feed simulation. If you want to turn that off, you can turn that off by going to analog video, no simulation, which I prefer. Um, you, you eventually do fly out of range and the screen goes black uh, with that on. You can also set things up for graphs, maps, uh, pitot tube, beeper. You can have you know, an infinite battery, how much battery you've got. So you can set this up to fly pretty close to your uh, real plane. So we've got 12 satellite fixes, perfect. 
So what we need to do now before we can actually fly is actually start the engine. Now this is something that with our batteries we just start you know, arm and go but with this uh, flight simulator we need to go down to start engines to running and that's it. Now all I'm going to do is arm and you can see we've armed. Right and what I'm going to do is add some power and I'm going to pull back and take off. Now the takeoffs can be a bit sketchy on this I've noticed it doesn't seem to always uh, get the attitude until you've been flying for a little bit but once you have everything is fine so I'm going to stick it in angle and I'm hands off now uh, let's lower the throttle a bit let's go 50 so I'm hands off in angle everything's doing good stuff like auto level does work so if we uh, put it on auto level it should calculate the level which it doesn't appear to be doing or it is slowly the ground's coming up which didn't help so let's get a bit of altitude but if i go hands off now the auto level should uh level off let's get a bit more altitude <laughs> the, the reason i chose this area is because it is quite hilly um which you'll you'll see why it's going to be handy in a minute uh but yeah so let's get some altitude back the throttle to cruise and we'll do auto level and we we can see that it is working it is just raising and lowering the altitude slightly so that we can get our level and now it's sort of settled reasonably well so let's turn auto level off now at this point we can do what we want we can you know stick it in acro have a fly and it behaves pretty well bit of, bit of wing wobble because it is a flying wing uh, the reason why that um, other aircraft isn't so good that looks like a flying wing is because it actually isn't a flying wing it is a traditional aircraft with a tail so it doesn't behave like a flying wing at all this one that mark has made is actually modeled on a flying wing so it behaves as you would expect even a nice bit of wing waggle so there we go now one of the things I mentioned was we can test stuff like return to home so if I stick it in return to home we can make sure that our altitude is working correctly we can check that it goes back to the home point all that sort of good stuff we can just test it out if you this is this is doing it all itself um, but um, yeah so if you wanted to test stuff that you've set up in the INAV logic conditions you can do all that in here too so it is pretty useful from that point of view but what I'm going to also going to do is once we've got home I'll show you something else that we can do oh yeah safe homes you can actually test your safe home position stuff like that but anyway as you can see uh, it all works so let me just disarm <laughs> in the middle of the air which of course we wouldn't normally do and what we're going to do is exit so we'll go file quit and quit now at this point i've not disconnected the flight controller that is still connected to the computer so it hasn't lost power which gives us some interesting options now this is where it will be really interesting to to you guys because especially if you fly long range or missions because if we pop into mission control it thinks we're in china so once if you go into x-plane choose your starting airport and do a little bit of a flight it it actually gets the gps coordinates and puts them on your flight controller so you can then take that to somewhere that you want to fly with a waypoint mission and try it out so um all you'd need to do is we're taking off from this airport right here that's where we were taken off from so what we'd need to do is add our missions uh, our waypoints save them to the EEPROM and try it out now I'm going to disconnect this I'm not going to save it and I'm going to go back into X-Plane right so back in X-Plane and now we're going to test out our waypoint mission so again I'm going to choose the noob wing I'm going to start at Dingling Airport and let's just start the flight and what I'm trying to do here is put the waypoint missions through its paces. On the INAV fixed wing group, I believe it was Jonathan Jelkin who wanted to do a mission where he was in like a canyon type thing. So 
this is an ideal place to test something like that. So again, we'll connect to our flight controller. We will start our engines. We will start our plane and we will take off. So yeah, again, don't worry about the takeoff so much. Once you're in the air, everything settles down. So let's just go to our mission. So this is doing our waypoint mission. I'm going to press M to bring up our map and then we can zoom in on our plane right here. So let me just move that out of the way. Let's see if we, yeah, there we go. So let's see if we hit any mountains. <laughs> What we'll do is shorten this down and we'll see what happens at the end of it. So there we go guys, not only can we check out what our waypoint mission works and doesn't hit a hillside, we can also check out the weather in China. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just a bit of fun, but you, you can see that it's a really useful tool. And yeah, to be honest, if this was a real waypoint mission, we would want to revisit some of these altitudes. So, you know, literally some tree bashing in some cases, but we're very close to the top of the hills. But again, we're doing it inside a simulator we can actually check that it works before actually putting it in a plane and having a fly. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please remember to give this a thumbs up, click the subscribe and the bell icon to help get this video out to more people so they can learn how to set up the HITL in INAV 6.2. Thank you very much for watching guys. Fly models like you stole them and do some tree bashing. Why not? We're doing it in the sim. See ya.